our industry affects absolutely everything. You wake up in it, you go to sleep in it, you work in it, you play in it, you have your family in it. Everything around us that we physically engage with every day, somebody's designed it, they've made it, they've installed it and constructed it so it works. Our aim as an industry is to, is to make our built environment better so that we have a better quality of life. It's more sustainable, more environmentally friendly and supports our communities better and better every day. There's all sorts of people in all sorts of roles, whether it's on site or design offices or factories or workshops, making things, doing things, installing things, using the latest technologies. Um, it's real cutting edge stuff. It's people that are in school or in colleges right now that within the next 10 years are going to be building and doing and making all these sorts of things we're talking about. People that are already into gaming and Minecraft and all those sorts of things and social media can walk naturally straight into this stuff and actually run rings around people like me. So our companies are organisations uh, and, and businesses that are up to about 250 people in number. They're rather like the, the engine room of, the of our industry and the projects that we have. They make up round about 90% of our industry, which represents something like two to three million people in the UK on a good day, and somewhere between seven to ten percent of UK PLC GDP. SMEs uh, have totally diverse functions and, and businesses, ranging from designers to engineers to specialist consultants like acoustics people and fire engineers and landscape designers and mechanical and electrical engineers and subcontractors, cladding specialists, piling, there's all sorts of things going on, as well as people that make things and buy things and supply things to go on site. So there's a huge range of roles there. Hello, my name is Ramesh and I'd really like to pursue a career in architecture. Hi, my name is uh, Akin and I'm an architect at David Miller Architects. I started working with a lot of school projects and I found that really exciting. So it's a lot of spatial planning. Um, so it's all about making the, the numbers, so the areas that you have to get fit on the site. So there's a bit of challenges, you know, trying to put pieces of blocks together on a site. Um, I quite like that. And obviously the, the client um, side of things, when you're speaking to a client who's spent so many years getting to this stage and they're quite excited about seeing something materialise and you're basically that person to transfer something that was once in someone's head into something physical. So I think that bridge and that transition is just amazing. Go for it, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a great environment to work in, you know, you're not always in the office. You know, sometimes you're in office, sometimes you're on site, sometimes you're in other people's offices having meetings. So there's always something new to do. Um, it's never really the same job. Hi, I'm Ellis and I've always wanted to be a civil engineer. Hi, my name is Lindsay. I work as an engineer with Elliot Wood. We work on both bridges and buildings. I think being able to have that kind of impact on people's lives is, is quite tremendous. You really feel like you're adding value to society. Um, it's quite significant when you go home at the end of the day and you think that something that you've done has such an impact on a wide scale. That's the really great thing with infrastructure is you get to see a large impact for what seemingly every day you just go to work and you plug away and the repercussions of what that can do in society is tremendous. One of the most exciting projects in the office currently is the Rotherhithe Bridge. So this is a new bridge um, that's going to be going between Canary Wharf and um, Rotherhithe. The bridge is going to be the longest Baskill opening bridge in the world. So it's quite, it's quite landmark really and the architectural feature of it as well will be quite significant as you walk down the Thames. So there will be thousands of people that will be able to use this every day to get through to work and back to home every day. So it's really impacting people's lives. Hello, my name is Nathaniel. I'm 15 years old. When I grow up, I'd like to be a structural engineer. Hi, I'm Alex Shah, I'm a structural engineer at Richard Jackson Limited. When people think of buildings, they think of architecture, um, architects, or oh, you an architect, everything like that. Not a lot of people know what a structural engineer and a civil engineer does, you know, but I was once told at university that 
Um, without structure and civil engineers, civilization as we know it couldn't exist because there'd be no roads, buildings, you know, bridges. Absolutely everything you look at, you know, is, is sort of some hand of some hand of engineering, you know, behind it. My name's Russell Rapson. I'm a structural engineer and I work for SWJ Consulting. Without structural engineers, buildings wouldn't stand up, so the ones we all work in, go to school in, sleep in, just, they just wouldn't be there. And especially some of the iconic buildings around the world, they just wouldn't be possible without the input of structural engineers. Seeing a building through from sort of concept stage all the way, all the way through to, to the finish sort of completion date is, is amazing to see this thing sort of go up, um, and especially with the BIM thing, because you are Whereas before you were on a 2D sort of plane, you'd see everything in 2D, whereas now we're seeing it in this whole 3D um, visualisation, so we can really truly see that, ah yeah, it is bang on what, you know, what we saw back at, that, back at that sort of concept stage. Hi, I'm Michael, and after I leave school, I'd love to pursue a career as a land surveyor. Hello, my name's Claire, I work for Spatial Dimensions and I'm a land surveyor. In the built environment, every project needs to start off with a land survey or a measured building survey so that the, the contractors know exactly what's there, so what can be added to, what can be knocked down, what, what can be done to start that project. You're going to need a land surveyor to tell you that. Every day, I don't know what I'm walking into, it's different every day. Um, I get to travel all over the country um, or all over the world, some people do. Um, and I love the variety, I love the fact that um, we're always at the forefront of technology and pushing the boundaries. Every day is different and it really does give you the opportunity to make a difference to other people's lives. So uh, the building or sports venue or anything you're involved with is going to have an impact on the people that are going to use it in the future and hopefully it's going to stand the test of time. The built environment is our very lives. You know, and behind that is sitting all this wonderful technology we keep talking about and all this data and information. But at the end of the day, the whole point of that stuff is to create the environment we live and work in.